This week, Emily Maitlis kicked off her Wednesday night news night with the most wonderful statement. She said, the disease is not a great leveller, the consequence of which everyone, rich or poor, suffers the same. And she went on to outline how people in the lower paid sectors of society are most in contact with other people and more likely to contract COVID-19. Well, I want to talk about equality a little bit today because I'm from the Inclusivity Project. I'm Laura Lloyd and we've been working to help it be a no-brainer for small businesses in Cornwall to include a diverse range of people in their workforce. People who are disabled, who have long-term health conditions and who are older workers and to really make that make good business sense for them. By the way, you can sign up to our newsletter at theinclusivityproject.co.uk forward slash five hyphen workforce hyphen trends. I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. So you can click on that. You can sign up to hear about our research, to hear about our business support and more. And we're really concerned at the Inclusivity Project right now to map the new pressures upon businesses and those sectors of society who were experiencing a disproportionate employment gap in the first place, to map the effect of COVID-19 on people with disabilities, people with long-term health conditions and older workers, as well as on small businesses who are struggling to survive right now as well. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of what one of our partners has been doing. We're led by the University of Exeter and one of our key partners is Disability Cornwall. They're currently going hell for leather right now, running a community kitchen with the support of Cornish Oven, delivering hot pasties and a cooked meal to many of their members. And Jane Johnson, who runs Disability Cornwall, has said that they're really dealing with helping people get prescriptions, um, food, and some disabled people have been rehoused because they were living in, for example, emergency accommodation like Travel Lodge, and they've been put into situations which are unfamiliar and potentially don't meet their needs as well. So they're under a lot of pressure right now. They also often employ um, care assistants, personal care assistants, or um, have community volunteers. So they're having a lot of traffic coming and going from their homes. So they feel extra exposed to COVID-19 as well. Now this is set against a backdrop of emergency legislation that the government brought in, which really suspended the Care Act of 2014. That there's, there have been easements, but the bottom line is that the NICE, the NICE Guidance for Intensive Care Clinicians, provides a priority ranking of who should receive support in the end, in the event that resources are limited. And disabled people feel that they might be poorly assessed because their economic contribution hasn't been on a par with people who are not disabled. And so th this employment gap that the Inclusivity Project has been working with is is paramount, is a really um, a key factor for people right now. And it's really important that when we come out of this health crisis and this economic crisis, that we don't re-enter into a society that has exactly the same inequalities in it that it had in the first place and if you're a small Cornish business and you are wondering what you can do to support all of your um, staff right now and especially I know that you're struggling just to um, recruit just to retain your people perhaps to look after their mental health um, I've got a couple of resources that I've come across for you um, some great resources from the Business Disability Forum. Um, they've got a webinar coming up on the 16th of um, April called COVID-19 and Managing Mental Health. And they also have one on the 23rd of April called COVID-19 and Your Disabled Employees. So I'll drop a link to those into 
the comments section underneath this video. But in addition to that, I'd love to hear from you. If you're a business or you're from one of these sectors or you work with people who are disabled or older or who have long-term health conditions or you're running a business and you're trying to stay afloat right now, I'd love to hear from you. What are your priorities right now? What are your concerns? Do you have particular concerns around the well-being of your workforce? And are you finding ways to support them? What are you doing to support them? And um, how can we all understand better what's going on in this transition time in terms of including people, in terms of diversity? And is it rocking the boat in terms of equality? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Take care.